Hello class, in this video we'll talk about trigger and we'll use that trigger to activate object and deactivate object. So first we'll have to create a trigger. So we'll go to the top menu, game object, and we can create a 3D object and a cube. And we'll use this cube as the trigger. So I'll place it in the middle of the stage. By default, when you create a cube, um, it should have a box collider. As you know, if um, the box collider is checked on, that means you can't enter that object. So in other words, you can't enter that trigger. So the trigger is not functioning. All right, so um, here in the box collider uh, is trigger, so you can check it on. By check it on, now if I play the game, you can see that I can enter the object, right? So the box collider is still on. However, now it is a trigger. Okay, so here's our lady character, and we'll disable her in the beginning. So now this cube, it is a trigger, however, it doesn't have any function, so now we have to add a function to it. Um, so we'll use a script called Active Trigger. So I have put the download link under the video, you can download a script, and you can, in your assets folder, you can create a script folder, and just place your script in there, so you can use it. Okay, so select our cube, and here, Add component, and as you copy the script into your project by select the name, you should be able to locate it. All right. So here for the action in the beginning, we'll use active target is the object we would like to trigger. So that is our character. So just drag our character and bring it to here. And for the source, which is uh, the object you would like to trigger, that trigger. All right, so that would be our first person controller. So bring our first person controller to here. So now let's say if I play, and at the beginning, as you can see, the native character is hidden. However, when I walk in closer and enter that trigger, now the native character is showing. So by doing that, we have activated this lady by using this trigger. So now let's create another cube. And We'll use this as our second trigger. And let's uh, bring this back here. So for the second uh, cube, we'll also turn it as a trigger. And we'll add the script here. So this time, instead of use the active function, uh, we'll use deactive function. Okay, and we would like to deactivate this bag. Um, so let's say place the bag at the target. And our first person controller here as a source. Okay, and you play. And when I enter the first trigger, our native character showing up. Enter the second trigger, the bag disappeared. You can use this function for a lot of things. For example, I can go to the game object and uh, create a cube, and I create I can create a stairs. We can go to the game object and uh, this time we'll create an empty object. So this is an empty object. And on this empty object, we can add a box collider. And we'll use that box collider as a trigger. And we can place that trigger on the cube. And I'll duplicate since we'll uh, make multiple triggers. Okay, this is what we want to do is we would like to add the first trigger to show the first stair and then first stair to show the second stair. Alright, and goes forward. Alright. So for the first trigger we can add active trigger script. And for the source it will be our character. For our target it will be the first queue, which should be this one. And then goes to here. So for this one, we'll also add an active trigger and we'll add a first person controller as the source and target it will be the second cube. Right, this one. Then goes here. So for active trigger and we'll use the first person controller as a source. And for the target it will be that one. 
the fourth cube, which is this cube. Right, so it'll trigger this one. And then goes to here. We'll also add an active trigger. And we'll use our first person controller as a source. And um, the fifth cube as a target, which is here, the fifth cube. All right, so now we can select these four cubes and hide all of them. Now we can test to play the game. And as we enter the first um, trigger, first the cube will show up and we can jump onto the first one. And then the second cube show up and we can jump to the second cube and then to the third and then to the fourth and see how far we um, jump from our stage. So that is the trigger, active trigger, and you can do deactivate as the same. So as you jump from the first cube to the second one, and the first will disappear. And then you jump to the third cube, the second will disappear. Right, so by doing that, you can make your game more interesting. Now we'll make it a little bit complex. So here I created this iron cage model, and I rigged the door. And I created a, this door open animation from frame 10 to frame 80. And here's the model for the door and the cage. And also I, I duplicate this door model. And for this one, I didn't animate it. So it just keeps still and I hide it for purpose. All right, so now let's go to file and export all, export it as an FBX file and make sure you check on animation and I used uh, the 2011 file for me. After you export the model, let's copy both the FBX file and the texture file into Unity. Let's bring it to the stage and let's put our lady character inside of the cage. So what I wanted to do is I want to create a, a trigger like a switch, before my character touch that switch, uh, the door will keep shut, okay? And whenever my character touch that switch, the door will open. All right, so I'll go to game object and create a, a cube, and we'll use this cube as a switch. Okay, and make sure um, check on its trigger. For the cage, uh, we have created an animation in Maya, so we have to load that animation. So select the Iron Cage 2 uh, in the model folder and we'll go to the animation tab and we'll go, go down below here add the animation tab and we'll add uh, let's say open door animation hit return key when you're down and tap range and we'll use the entire range the entire animation okay as you know for character animation that I imported earlier I showed you uh, I check it on loop time, right? So the animation will keep in loop, like the idle animation, the round walk animation, the character have. So I did loop animation, but here, uh, since I only want the door open one time, so I uncheck the loop. Okay, and apply. Now let's go to the animation control and create a animation controller, and let's name it Iron Cage Control. And open it. And here's the default intro stage and exit stage. So I'll go back to the model and find our cage model. And I'll import the open door animation in here. So when the object is activated and the animation is awake, and I only want it play the open door animation so the door will open and then stop it here. I don't want it to go back, exit, and then go back into the scene and open the door again and exit and open. So I don't want it to repeat. So I just connect entry to here and don't connect to exit. So animation will stop it here. All right, so now go back to the scene. Before I apply the animation onto here, uh, so let's duplicate it. All right, so for the first one, I'll uh, rename it as um, open door and the second one, the duplicated one, I'll say door uh, closed. So the difference is for the first one open door
This is a door model that I ringed with the joint and it all have the animation, open door animation. And the second one is the steel pose and I hide it so we can just keep it hidden. And the door closed so we'll switch it. So we'll show the steel pose of the door and for the animated door we'll hide it. Okay, so that's the difference. So that means this one will have the animation, this one will not have the animation. All right. So let's move on to the first one, and we'll drop the animation control onto it. So let me hide the second one and show you the first one. And you can see okay, the door open automatically, and it'll stop at the post. Now if I hide the first one and show the second one, and you'll see that we don't have any animation for that. So now you get the idea. So what I'll do is I'll switch this to with that cube. So now we have check down trigger for it. And I'll do add component, active trigger, and we'll put the open door model here. And we'll use the first person controller as the source. Alright, and we'll add the activate trigger uh, script. And for action, we'll do deactivate. And when the character enter here, so we'll deactivate the door closed pose. So we'll hide this one, and here we'll activate this one. This, this is the function of the script. So here's the target. We want to deactivate the closed, the door closed model. And we would like to use the first person controller as a trigger. So now let's test the play. So as you can see, when we start the game, the door is remaining closed. Okay, and when we touch this switch, we can touch it, and now the door is open. And now we can enter the cage and save this lady. 